Dave, how are you? Good to see you again. Good to see you again. Uh, the last time that uh, we drove together, the weather was a little bit different. We were, we were <laughs> a lot of white, a, a lot of snow in Colorado for the, the Winter Academy, uh, where we drove the MX-5 Miata on the snow and then the CX-5 also on the snow. So. This I was is, driving one of these in that event, nobody else was allowed to drive it yet. Oh yeah, you're right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So now, my turn, so <laughs> great to be here again. And I, I guess uh, this is the other extreme of, of the lineup, right? Because yeah. the MX-5 uh, Miata, then all the other SUVs, the, the sedan, but this is like the top of the ice in, in, in pretty much everything, right? Yeah, yeah, this is the perfect car to tow your Miata to the racetrack. Oh really, you can do that <laughs> Oh this. yeah. So, um, this car has been uh, engineered specifically for the U.S. market, but also engineered in a way that you look beyond, I mean, what you called it in the presentation, like real life driving, right? Yeah, yeah, we really tried to focus on what people are really doing with the cars every day. I mean, the sort of the standard specs that people quote on cars, zero to 60 times and peak horsepower, and yeah. it turns out the stuff you do to make a car perform well in those tests are not the same things you do to make it work well day to day. Yeah. Um, and, and so we kind of had to make a decision. Are we making a, a catalog or are we making a car? Yeah. And we said, we're, gonna, we're making a car uh, for daily use and we really focused on, on uh, the, the kind of acceleration that you do all the time. So like instead of setting a target for zero to 60, we'd look at, say, if you're on the freeway, you're going 55 and you want to pass somebody uh, and it's just like half throttle, we rated uh, what kind of response time is there from when you get to half throttle yeah. to when it, it actually gives you the, the G you're looking for and and uh, how much how much acceleration is available at that half throttle. And we benchmarked a whole bunch of different cars and kind of set our targets on this kind of real part part throttle, everyday driving kind of stuff. Yeah, and you, uh, we have, uh, we all drove from San Francisco out of here. Yeah. And, like really, I mean, we experienced that exactly. I mean, like, torque is like really amazing. Like, yeah. half throttle there, I'm like, you accelerate like really, right. really did, quickly did, or fast. Did yeah. you ever floor it? No, no, yeah, exactly. not even. So I mean, that's not really where, where the important stuff is. Yeah. So what happens when you focus on the, the real world performance, you end up realizing that you want a an engine that has really good uh, performance performance at the same engine RPM that you're cruising at. So you cruise at low RPM and sixth gear, you know, yeah. 2000 RPM. If we can make an engine that performs really well at 2000 RPM and has a whole lot of torque, uh, then when you roll into the throttle, it doesn't have to downshift. You don't have to go sixth, fifth, fourth to get your acceleration. It just pulls right there. Yeah. Then you don't need a nine speed transmission. You don't have to wait for all this shifting. And everything works a, a lot more directly and more smoothly. And, and this one is the last, uh of your vehicles that has the sky uh, tech, um, technology, right? Right, right. So we sky uh, active, I'm we sorry. introduced uh, our sky active platform to the CX-5 when that first came out, and we've been rolling it out as with each new introduction. And then, and this is the this is finally every single Mazda is sky active at this point. And that uh, two liter. This is a 2.5 liter oh. turbo, um, but 310 foot pounds of torque, way down to 2,000 RPM. Yeah, a lot, a lot for this. I mean. The car is big, obviously a three-row thing, yeah. um, a lot of space inside. But like when you drive it, it doesn't really feel that heavy or big. Actually, I mean, like it's really nimble. I mean, like you can. I mean, it's not a sports car. It's not the MX-5. Right, right. But I mean, it's fun to drive too. Well, there's two things going on there. One, it is a lot lighter than than the old CX-9. It's about 260 pounds lighter, wow, lot, yeah. depending on which uh, trim level you get, right? Um, and a lot of that is, you know, the four-cylinder turbo engine is like 130 pounds lighter than the V6 was. But the body is, is is more efficient, so it's a lighter body. We have an aluminum hood. The all-wheel drive system is lighter. Um, but also the way we tune the car, we really uh, we put a lot of work into trying to understand what feels natural to uh, uh, to a person who's driving. Yeah. So what what is what is in, inherently a natural feeling for a human being? So we end up studying human anatomy and human behavior a lot to understand what a car should do to make the, make itself feel normal to a person. Uh, and we've, we, we came across some interesting insights in, okay. in the, like the fact that when you're walking, uh, you think you're just going straight and level, but your head's actually bobbing up and down and side to side with your stride, and your mind is filtering that out. And that kind of helped us realize that we can actually tune the ride a little bit softer uh, if we let it move just the right way that you're used to tuning out. You just feel it like it's completely smooth and, and level, but the car is actually moving a little bit. Okay, uh, so it's like uh, if we will 
with an example like with these new cameras with the have a gimbal that every, always stay like in the right position right that's that's built into your head yeah exactly right? like if, if you had like the raw image data coming into your eyeballs you'd see yeah, everything you jiggling all the time but your mind fun. your mind is filtering all that stuff out and so we really did a lot of study into what what your subconscious is doing so we could tune a car that feels right to you intuitively that's pretty amazing because I mean when people think about cars and obviously engineering and the technique engineering get it it's getting more and more advanced but that's like going beyond like normal thinking when you yeah, engineering a car. Well, I mean, the, the, a lot of attention in engineering is paid to the engineering process itself of, of, of how do you make the car do what you want it to do. Um, but we're sort of back up a level of well, what do you want it to do, yeah. right? What 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 is really the right target? Um, and and that's that's where I think we really sort of stand apart from most uh, most car companies. Yeah. So with with this uh, big uh, three row uh, seating SUV or crossover, I guess. Um, and all the power and all the good driving that you get, you still get a lot of uh, really good um, mileage, right? I mean, like yeah, absolutely, it's amazing. The fuel economy on this car is the the best best in its class. But yeah, and not only uh, you know we took that whole philosophy of, of not paying too much attention to the catalog and paying attention to the real world, we took that into the fuel economy as well. A lot of times you'll get a car that has a really good EPA rating. And then when you drive it, the real fuel economy is not nearly as good. Yeah, as the sticker, that the, the numbers, the API numbers are like calculation because those tests are done in not real life situations. Yeah, well, right? the, the, yeah, the EPA test that they drive really, really gently, uh, and then they they apply some some formula, some calculation to make the fuel economy worse. Uh, but it's based on sort of an average of how much difference there is between that kind of driving and real yeah. driving. But the thing is, different engines respond differently to more aggressive driving. And typically, a turbocharged engine is really efficient at light load and really inefficient at heavy mm -hmm. load. So the more you, the harder you drive, it, yeah. the more you use that power, the, it's going to get dramatically worse fuel economy. And that's why people usually don't uh, aren't happy with their real world fuel economy on a turbo engine. Yeah, they get um, disappointed. But it's like that's what people don't really understand. I mean, it's like kind of very deceiving, even. When the advertisement, right? <laughs> to be honest with you, yeah. So because we we didn't want we didn't want our customers to, to have that. We didn't want them coming back to us complaining yeah. about their fuel economy. So um, we engineered a, a what, it's called a cooled EGR system. So most the reason turbo engines get so inefficient is when you're the turbo's pumping a bunch of extra air into the engine, and that makes the combustion more intense. It gives you more power, but it also makes it hotter. And you reach a point where if it gets too hot, it starts to damage the engine. And so to keep it below that damage threshold. Uh, when you're making a lot of boost, they have to throw extra fuel in. It seems counterintuitive, but more fuel will make it run cooler. Okay. But of course, that's wasting fuel. That's, you're not able to use the energy from that fuel. Um, so instead of throwing extra fuel in, we put in this EGR system that takes exhaust gas. EGR is exhaust gas for circulation. Yep. Takes the exhaust and routes it back to the to the inlet, uh, and the exhaust doesn't have as much oxygen in it because you, you burn the oxygen off already. And that cools down and slows the combustion. But because that exhaust is really hot, it's going to make the engine run too hot. It's going to make it knock. So we run it through a, a cooler that uses the engine okay. coolant to cool the exhaust back down before it goes back into the engine. Um, and it's a, it's a complicated little system, uh, and it doesn't it doesn't really affect the fuel economy on the EPA test, but it affects it in the real world. Yeah. So we don't get any credit for it on the sticker, but we get credit for, for, the experience. for it when you yeah. actually own the car, right? Which is what and really counts. Ultimately, yeah. what it's all about. So so we went ahead and. and did that so that's that's we really again that's us we take a very sort of different approach to, to how yeah we i car. um uh, for people watching this please go and watch the other videos of the of day's presentation which is like quite long like half an hour the but link is right here right? <laughs> really exactly <laughs> uh but really really interesting because you have a way of explaining really complicated things i mean for for everybody like me to understand yeah. and it's really really cool when when you translate that technical stuff into real life situations so yeah. I mean, please watch that and uh, the other thing I wanted to, we, we need to talk about this is the design interior and interior of this car I mean I think there's no rules to make a car that is not like considered a luxury car yeah <laughs> into this I mean because this is like really really top of the line with it can't compete with anything else 
yeah this is this is a really really nice uh interior that we've got for this the we'll put, we'll put other things i mean like and, and again this is car i mean top top price is a little bit over 40 44 something 44 for signature level but yeah. i mean that's like everything that you can get and it's it's really really amazing i mean uh, and it's another way of how mazda is doing things lately right i mean yeah. This is actually the last car that completes the transition from your four days to like completely independent, right? Right, right. And we're really kind of inching the brand up to a more sort of sophisticated, mature place. You know, we're a, sales volume wise, we're a very small company. We're yeah. less than 2% of the market in the US. Uh, and we're not really pushing that hard to increase the sales volume. We want, we want, we'll just, we actually sell more of our GT level and premium level of our cars and as long as we can have a good transaction price and build a better car then you don't need to make as much volume right we don't want to compete on just throwing out commodity cars we want to make really great cars right and, and that's, that's and i'm going to tell you something lies. that not because you're here or i'm in this master program but i recently drove back to back and you're going to probably be very surprised now ferrari 488 uh -huh. the new one gtv and then I drove them the MX-5 Miata down on the <laughs> Mount Holland. Oh, that's Canyon. not even fair, man. Well, no, I mean, this is the thing. I mean, Ferrari, an amazing car, yeah. but you expect what, what you are going to get of a Ferrari. Like, yeah, really yeah. a lot of power, like great handling and all that. But then you jump into the Miata, and then like, you go through the canyons, and you're going maybe 60, but you feel you're going like 100 yeah, yeah, yeah. with a lot of control. So it was really, really fun. And that, that's another great thing about what you were explaining, like the real time, real uh, life situations. I mean, like, That's, obviously it's not a, compar a fair comparison, but when but you But that is really that, the whole philosophy behind the yeah. X5 is that you can, you can use it, you can enjoy it on, in the real world. Whereas uh, the Ferrari's capabilities are so amazing, but it's hard to push the car hard enough to really get to experience Absolutely, that. Yeah. Um, that's actually why uh, in, in other markets we have the 1.5 liter version of the MX-5 that has even less power because the thinking there is it's actually more fun to bring out the full performance of the car yeah. and just be wide open throttle, revving it to red line, and you're still not going that fast, but you get to really <laughs> maximize. The feeling, it's you, amazing. Yeah, you, you get the experience and you get to really you know uh, wrestle the most out of the car, and yeah. so a less power actually lets you do that more. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's a completely so, different different philosophy. Yeah. Coming back to this one, I mean, this is also, I mean, this is a family car, obviously, yeah. but I mean, very utilitarian. You can have some fun with this, I mean, because again, it's not a sports car, but like we experience the twisties here, and like, I mean, it really, really drives really well. Same driving philosophy in a different flavor. Well, I guess. The, the whole idea behind this car is that just because you have kids doesn't mean you give up on yourself, yeah. right? Now, you've got to have a balance. So you've got to have all the utility you need with, as, a, as a family, but then, you know, you got to be able to put the kids to bed and go drive this car and still feel like you're in something nice that you want to be in and you can yeah. enjoy the driving experience, right? So uh, yeah, that, that's really the whole thought process behind this car. Well, I mean, this way, this is a we will make justice to all the work that you have put into this car for probably what, like four or five years? It's been a couple of years, <laughs> yeah. yeah. We've been working and on this And this is a, a very short uh, drive that we are doing here, but like, thank you very much. I mean, we really, uh, I really enjoy talking to you and experiencing different cars with you. So maybe we've done in snow, we've done here on the, At the beach. road, <laughs> the beach. Now maybe the next time we'll go to a racetrack or something. That sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> thank right. you very much. Good to see you again. Thank <laughs> you.